Nick here, and two weeks ago, Elon Musk came to us with an incredibly ambitious, challenging, and honestly underappreciated attempt to colonize the cosmos. In his hour-long discussion, Musk captivated us, and what seemed to be his larger goal of making humans an interplanetary species, he talked a lot about rocket design, fuel efficiency, reusable aircraft, and so on. Ultimately though, I think we can all still marvel at the concept of multi-planetary exploration and its very real implications in the coming years. Let's check it out. So I guess the two biggest questions that remain to be answered are why Mars and how we can get there and set up shop. Well. First things first, this kind of stuff is not new. Whether it be the Aldrin Cycler, or billions of dollars in NASA funding, or even very high grossing sci-fi movies that seem to entrance us, one thing is for certain. Getting to the red planet is a huge goal of ours. Now you take that and you couple it with Mars's atmosphere, gravity, and mineral wealth, all of which are very similar to that of Earth, and it makes a lot of sense. Oh, and it also takes only three months to get to Mars. And given that we're talking about a realm where average distances take months to years to hundreds to thousands of years to traverse, Mars seems like our best option. Okay, so you get it. Getting to Mars is the coolest part. And on top of everything else I already said, if you take that Mars has a ton of frozen water and a very high level of CO2 concentration, it makes clear and abundant sense why Musk and a bunch of others are calling it the prime pickings for the first self-sufficient colony in space. But now how do we get there? Technically, the technology already exists, but it's going to cost you around $10 billion a person just to get there. And that's not considering living conditions and setting up itself. So this is where SpaceX comes in. It's developing a fleet of reusable aircraft that could get us there and back for as little as $200,000 a person. And while Musk did not discuss things like health conditions, living requirements, and so on, he did tell us the basics of the most important part landing. The system is a multi-stage process that all begins with getting the spacecraft into orbit. Once it's there, several tankers will go back and forth to help refuel it so that it can make its long journey. Now here is the coolest part. The aircraft will use a special type of methane fuel that can be manufactured on Mars itself so that once it gets there to drop off all the colonists and supplies, people can build the fuel and make it on Mars and fuel it up and send it back to Earth so that it can make continuing trips. It's awesome and ingenious and Musk hopes that in the next few decades this will allow us to get almost a million people on Mars, enough to have us consider it the world's first self-sufficient colony in space. Given our very aggressive timetable and consideration of all of these ideas, it begs one question. Let's just take a step back and appreciate the beauty of this entire situation. We've been told that for hundreds of years, our main purpose as a species was, was to transcend the world we live in and, and ponder our purpose and, and why we belong here. And to think that we're finally at the stage where we can begin to pierce the cosmos and explore the vastness around us is really amazing. A lot of people think that uh, as a species, one of your crowning achievements can be to transcend the world you live in. And the fact that we're so close and on the edge of that is absolutely mind blowing. And if that doesn't impress you, I don't know what will. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.